came from my unconscious. So this is one of the cool things about your unconscious, is that your unconscious mind is incredibly powerful. And as you begin to integrate the patterns on these cards, mm -hmm. it just makes it, it. Your unconscious gets the pattern, and then it starts using them in all kinds of cool ways. I love it. So, uh, and I have a feeling you're hypnotizing me as you're saying. It. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. So these are yeah, these are the same kind. Uh, Kind of things, but focusing on, uh, focusing on the patterns I think of that's persuasion. Exciting. Yeah, so very it, exciting stuff. I take the first one. This mm. is the King of Hearts. It says, as you sit here listening to me, you might, and then you can guide a person yes. in whatever direction you want to go. It leaves that ambiguous gap, doesn't it? Yeah, the whatever your goal is. You fill it in yourself. So I, I yeah. let's say if I, if if I wanted you to be curious about uh -huh. these, I might say. So as you sit here listening to me, you may already have noticed just how curious you can be about yeah. something like this. Or if I wanted you to buy a deck of these, I say, as you sit here listening to me, you might be wondering just what it's going to be like when you own a deck for yourself, exactly. if you really see the uh, patterns being used in your daily I life, love it. and so on and so forth. Again, each card has the the pattern on it, yeah. and then a description of how the pattern works. Because oh, I think it's really fantastic. useful for people to have that kind of just a grasp of how it works because then yeah. it's easier to generalize. And it. also you get more confidence, don't you? You really know what it's all about yeah. and it's not just something silly that you're trying. You don't really yeah. trust. You know what what you're trying to do. And I've got I don't know I don't know if I'm allowed to say, well I'll say it anyway, I could get it. I got an email from someone the other day who was working on uh, the uh, Obama campaign and she took a bunch of the uh, stuff that she learned from me in terms of influence mm. and that sort of thing and put it into practice in terms of raising donations for the campaign and that's oh, what they totally. tripled yeah. their donation oh, rate totally. in a day. It was obvious. It was, we didn't know it was from you, but well, we, this, knew, uh, we knew uh, they uh, got some, tapped into some NLP and uh, hypnotic language. Yeah. Well, and, and I, <laughs> she was at a, working at a grassroots level, so yeah. I had to take, take yeah. a... Um, I can't awesome. take take uh, credit for the whole campaign, but I know that at least on one part of it, they well, applied yeah. these patterns yeah. and uh, made a huge difference. And we've done this in companies, gone in. That's so exciting, isn't it? Just oh, to, it's amazing. Just to see how um, how NLP hypnotic language is making such a difference in people's lives, even if people don't do NLP, but they just do sure. hypnosis, you know. And um, just to see the effects of how dramatically the changes take place and how easy it is and how people enjoy it so much and they and, and it really does build those relationships because even in his campaign it's all about relationship yeah. building, wasn't it? And, and I think NLP offers great stuff for building and deepening mm. relationship. I think so too. Mm. I've noticed that a lot of people these days are using a lot of um, NLP in marketing and um, you know it's getting more and more prominent anyway in public speaking mm. marketing and those lines blur so much anyway I think um, and I find that interesting but it, NLP doesn't always get the credit for it you know well it's um, an interesting one I, mm. I think you know if you look at public speaking for instance mm. a lot of the things that have developed as NLP public speaking patterns were modeled from people who were brilliant public speakers in yeah. the first place who didn't know any yeah. NLP. Yeah. If I look at some of the great marketing that's yeah. been written over the years, like, you know, 50 years ago, yeah. amazing marketing that got written yeah. by people who didn't know NLP yeah. formally, yeah. but actually those patterns have been okay. modeled by NLP. Yeah. But yeah, I think NLP is working its way into, into all kinds of different applications, you know. These days, it'd be tough to do a sales course without there being without a bunch of NLP, NLP in it. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think that's so exciting. And so what other cards do you have? Do we've got a few other decks. Yeah. We've got we've got our wealth cards. Ooh, that's uh, exciting. And the wealth, we've got wealth cards and we've also got happiness cards. Oh, I have them somewhere. Oh, I have them somewhere. Wealth cards and happiness cards. Now, these, are, these jump up a level. And instead of looking at teaching language patterns, the teaching beliefs and concepts. Oh, that's so important. Yeah, it really is. I, I the other been, stuff is no good if you don't believe it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, and I've, I've been very fortunate. I've been able to spend a lot of time with people who are wealthy and people who are happy and successful and that sort of thing. And to find out what their beliefs are and what their 
uh, what things they do that make a difference. Now, were these in the? Uh, did the zebu have these cards? No, no. These the the, right? the zebu cards were uh, hypnosis cards, and I then took the idea oh, and just, said, okay, they were just hypnosis. Yeah, yeah. if yeah. we can use it for hypnosis, what other things can we use mm. it for? Because cards seem to the cards they're have a kind of magical again, property. They? Yeah. The, yeah. Um, so the happiness cards and the wealth cards are basically taking the patterns of happy success and wealth and teaching them to other You're people. You're so clever, you know, just to put these things in a, in a deck of cards and just to expand the concept. Mm. And I think that's um, a really great idea in marketing. You find something that works and if you can improve it, you know, if you can add to it or you just mm. pretty much duplicated it for different things. And I really yeah. love it. Um, and then just this uh, six months ago, maybe, we launched our sleight of mouth cards, which are the deck oh, I'm most excited that's about. That's exciting. The, I think yeah. I saw those. Because yeah. sleight of mouth is that one of is those exciting. things. Yeah, not that many people can do it well. That's right. And so I, I became, and uh, it, the story was the same. Our sleight of mouth you is very complicated. You do sleight of mouth training, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I just did quite... it last weekend. Oh, did you? Yeah. And it's just got a lovely reputation for your sleight of mouth. Um, training that you do, mm. which hopefully later on you'll tell us a little bit about. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, sleight, sleight of mouth, and for those people who haven't heard about it, mm. sleight of mouth is the art of conversational belief change. Mm. Uh, and the idea that that any belief uh, is has a structure and is something someone's learned, mm. whether they've learned it from their own experience or from their parents mm -hmm. or from teachers or whatever. Right. And it has a structure, it has a physical structure, and it has a linguistic structure. And the, the area where I'm particularly interested in it mm. is helping people overcome limiting beliefs, beliefs mm. which they perceive as limiting them. Mm -hmm. The kind of I can'ts, the kind of I can'ts that I, I was operating under when I didn't think that I could go That's out right. and do work that I love doing, yeah, and that yeah. sort of thing. And so, yeah, I'm really passionate about waking people up to the idea that they're yes, more than I, they I've they noticed that uh, by reading your blog and things mm -hmm. like that, you know, how passionately you feel about um, just people having the most happiness that they can have and uh, just having the best experience they can possibly have. And I think one of the things I read that you said was that whenever you um, spend time with somebody, make sure that they leave better than when you were with them before or something yeah. like that, right? And yeah. I love that. I absolutely love that because that's not that hard. So what if you can't remember all of the stuff? Mm. But you can remember that, can't you? It can make you know? people feel good. It can make people feel better than they felt before. Mm. You know, I really like that. 